was young it was more about achievement and now it's more about expression um, and that's I think the the gift of aging is that you can kind of uh, see things for how they are not as idealistic but yet not totally cynical I think some some women artists have done some of their best work as they get older I uh, look at someone like uh, Elizabeth Catlett um, who I always loved her work when I was in school, and um, she's still alive. I think she's in her 90s, still very active. I see all these women artists who, I think it's because they're creative, maybe, that this energy keeps them going. You know, they have a reason to get up every day, and that reason to get out of bed, that, you know, I have something I need to do, there's unfinished business, I think that just keeps them young, it keeps them fit, keeps them mentally engaged, and so um, I hope I, I do get to that point. You know. uh, right now, I, you know, have kind of a family crisis. My mother has Alzheimer's disease, and so, you know, at first, uh, I think a lot of families go through where they fight against it, and they try to do everything to stop it, and then after you live with it a while, you realize you have to live with it, and understand it and be accepting of it and try to find the funny side to it and that's how you get through it. I feel like in my mid-30s probably. You know it's amazing because when I was younger of course I thought 53 was I'd be ready for a walker. I really hope that you know when I'm 93 um, I feel like I'm 63 you know. I'm 60-ish or just the age thing I, I'm just not accepting it well because like for most of my life, I was the youngest in my family. I was the youngest in this group. I was the youngest in my class. I was the youngest, youngest. And then more recently, I have, my social life has circled around younger people, and so I'm feeling older, and I'm really feeling that. The, the years, but inside, you know, I'm still as young as, as, or younger than a lot of the people I'm with. 
So it's been really hard for me as I've hit more into my 50s to, to uh, accept it. Your talents develop as you get older, you're exposed more, you learn more. You know, you learn uh, good and bad things and, you know, I, just, I think you just mature. I'm not one of these people that's afraid to grow old. I know that a lot of artists, men and women, usually their, their talents really develop as they get in their 60s and 70s. And uh, I believe that I was very fortunate to have a little bit of success and when I was younger. And I just, I get excited to watch my work evolve and I feel it evolves almost every day. So I can hardly wait to see what it is when I'm 80. And I also know that people talk about retirement all the time and artists, artists never retire. I don't ever plan on retiring, I will paint for the day I die. And I look forward to the future. I'm excited about growing older as a woman. And I think there's more opportunity for women now that there used to be. So I, I think the sky's the limit. I'm very excited. I hope I live to be 190. I suppose since I've been 50, it's... I enjoyed my 50th birthday party because I felt that there's less to worry about. I was already done taking care of my daughter. I was, you know, I, um, I feel like I've come back a uh, I've come back in the same hood that I grew up in, and to to pick up, and it's not to start over, it's more to pick up where I left off. None of my parents even uh, reached 70, so uh, that that's another thing that, I mean, it does have an impact. I don't know uh, if songwriters are a different breed and that they think about stuff like that more than other people. You know, that is getting old and getting, you know, because people don't like generally to talk about it. I remember getting up and singing for the class, so I think I was always wanting to be a, a singer, um, just something that was that was inside of me. Certainly, I came up listening to Barbara Streisand, um, uh, Joni Mitchell, Carol King, um, and then as I grew older, I really I love Dinah Washington, huge Billie Holiday fan listening to those singers. I don't think I'm one that wants to try to stay young, look, you know, look like I did. Um, although it was, you know, it was nice to be cute and wear all the cute little fashions. It's, it's more difficult, I think, in the business. And, and 50, now that I'm 50 and, and a little older than 50, I'm finding I can't just go out and buy the cute little things and wear them because I think they look ridiculous. I mean, I'm trying to age gracefully. So it's a struggle, but it's one that I, you know, that I'm up for. Certainly it's, it's not easy, and, and particularly at this time, I think, well, America's always been so youth-oriented. Some of the physical stuff is hard. Some of the the, you know, hot flashes are, are difficult and, you know, some of those physical changes I'm finding a challenge. But as I say, I think, I think attitude is everything. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep that, you know, positive mental attitude going. I try not to take anything really too seriously. <laughs> sit, buddy. Can you sit down? Come on, sit down. But this is what I didn't get a guitar until I was like 16. It was from my sister's sorority sister. So, and it cost all of $20, probably something like that, that they gave me. And, uh, but I'd been interested in music before then. And uh, uh, I grew up with music. My dad sings, my mom sings. My dad always, I think, he, you know, wanted to be a, a, probably a big band singer. You know, which, and I have recordings of him, and I have recordings of me when I was five years old singing, so. But I do remember playing, you know, playing with a, you know, pretending a tennis racket was a guitar. You know, I worked for 15 years in a hospital as a medical photographer, so. But I always wanted to do music, and, uh, and now I'm almost 60, and so I'm doing it, finally. It took a long time, I mean, uh, I learned to play guitar, but I didn't write good songs until the last 10 years. I play six string, 12 string. Um, I play the harmonica. I play the um, piano a little more as a musical instrument to help me with theory or to help me 
just think something differently, you know, think a guitar thing, a guitar part or something differently. It might, it might come out different on a keyboard than it would on a fretboard. Um, I'm trying to learn slide guitar and stuff now. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting old. I have arthritis in my hands and stuff, and, and that's one way to really play without stressing your fingers out. And, uh, Town, of course, you know, from Akron is Chrissy Hind, and that, you know, that was a really influential, like, you know, it was. I, I just liked her. She was great. She played like a guy. Everybody says, I play like a guy. Uh, well, I was born and raised here, but I've been out in Arizona for about 12 years. The economy, I lost, in short, I lost my job, my condo. All my family's here. I was in a band with my brothers. Uh, probably, well, 15 years ago. It was relative harmony because it was all relatives. The band now is Amethyst. Um, uh, totally loving it because it's so many different, uh, so many different kinds of music. <sighs> I wish I would have done this years ago. You know that I'm learning so much just in the past few years that I never did back then, you know? I just sat around at the campfires, played the same old stuff. I set my guitar in its case and it sat there. And I was unhappy with me, depression, and once I got out, I was 215 pounds. I was a miserable person. Uh, just horrible times. And it's funny, you know, we just started. We just fell together. Amy, Al, I did, Amy saw me one night at an open mic and said, you know, I wish I had somebody who could sing like you. My dad, I'm trying to help my dad with his condo meeting. We need a performer. I went, we did it, and the three of us just sort of clicked. And we're still playing together and just having a good time. It's fun. It just started a new page in my life. And I've been singing a lot more and doing lead singing, which was rare for me in the past. I was less active with it in my life when I was married. I feel like I started this so late in my life, my real passion, you know. And now it's not even full time. You know, I work a 40-hour job. People who work with me or just know me in other circumstances, and then they see me on stage, and they just—that's what they say. They say, "Wow, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't know you had that in you. I didn't know that was you. Another side, a whole other side of you, you know." And I like that. I'm glad, uh, you know, that pleases me. Come home, I have a telephone, no message flashing there. Stay silent for so long, it's, it's like you never care. Well, I don't care for you either, baby. No, I, I never care for you either, baby. Portraits for me um, are based on memory. They're based on snapshots of various women within my community. So it could be my grandmother's eyes, my mother's lips, um, my neighbor's smile any of those things that make up who these women are. So they're not exactly a portrait of one woman, but they're a portrait of many women. The women in my life uh, growing up, my grandmothers, my aunts, the women in our neighborhood, um, they all helped to raise us. You know, it wasn't just your mother raising you or your grandmother raising you. It was the lady down the street that was raising you. Um, when you did something in the neighborhood that you weren't supposed to do, you know, any any person on the street, which was typically women at home, they had the right to chastise you and teach you better or, you know, arm you up and hug you and love you. So I don't think that they're invisible. Um, I see them. I've always seen them and I think I'll continue to see them. And many of the people in my family are artists. They draw, they paint, um, they make things. So growing up, it was just part of life. It was just something that you did. So there was never really a big deal that was made out of it, but 
it was just something that you woke up with every day. So I knew, you know, from the age of five that I was going to be an artist. I didn't quite understand how or what I would be doing, but I knew that it would be in the area of art. I think I will always live as an artist in all capacities of my life. Um, everything that I do in life is about creating and helping others to create and inspiring others to create. So when I'm 80 or 100, I see myself still creating art and helping others to create art. And I work as a medical social worker and decided about uh, 2002 that I wanted to get into art and pursue something that I was afraid to pursue when I was younger. So I came back to art school and uh, decided I would have my art degree before I was 50. And that is in a year from now. So I'm really uh, working hard right now to get to close to 50. So my grandmother, I would think, uh, was the biggest influence in my, uh, she was in the French resistance with her husband and they, uh, she was very outgoing and, I don't know, I like the word effervescent to describe her. She was not your usual grandmother. Um, and she was French, and so there's this kind of, there's a narrative that I grew up with that I don't know if it's real or not, what's truth and what isn't truth, but it's very intriguing and full of mystery and danger and fun and exotic locales and uh, so that that kind of feeds my imagination and uh, this is water-based oil and it's an abstraction from a still life that i have to this day painted 16 times this is a, a cow skull that's been abstracted and there's a lot of other elements in here so it's not an abstract visual anarchy it's an abstract that comes from something in life i had a friend in elementary school who i thought drew really well I mean, she could draw horses and people, and in about fifth grade, I thought that was, she was the best. So I wanted to draw like her. And uh, she didn't have any particular tips to tell me about how to get better, but I would just watch her. And then at the end of that school year, she transferred to another school. So I'm like, well, maybe if I just watch TV and practice from drawing the people on TV, or if I draw pictures I see in the magazine, maybe that will help me draw like Maria. And then when I graduated from a graduate school, I worked as a commercial artist or a graphic designer. And um, I felt a little bit in a rut maybe with working all day um, at my job. And then when I come home, I was exhausted. And I also did some freelancing. So my weekends were also tied up. So I didn't have any time for my own work so when we moved here, um, I actually did have time to then devote to, well, what do I want to do? I mean, eventually I found Silver Point, which is what I'm doing now. And, uh, I saw an exhibition at the Art Center that was devoted entirely to Silver Point back in 1986. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, this, this is perfect. This is a perfect drawing medium. I just have to learn how to do it. So I taught myself how to do that, and I've been focused on that ever since. So um, yeah, it's really different. I, I had no clue I'd ever be doing uh, Silver Point as my focus and that drawing would be the focus because I always thought it was going to still be printmaking. Um, when the kids were young, um, we included them with the art activities. So if we had an exhibition, we would just pack up everybody and we would go and they would, you know, help us in the, in the gallery, put work up and uh, they would see it all and we'd have to balance that with maybe a trip to the zoo. Or I think we're at a good point in our lives where um, we can really focus now more on the art making and just kind of enjoying it. Not that we weren't enjoying it while we were raising kids, but your time gets a little bit different. And um, so we're able to focus more a little bit.
when people come in here, they think, oh my gosh, she's got all these computerized ditches in that. But it's not about computerized ditches. Um, I don't want to have those. If I had them, then my work would look like something that came out of China. When I was a toddler, um, I found my Aunt Anna's um, sewing kit in her closet. And I had a brand new dress on my mom had just bought me. And um, I rearranged it a little bit. I got the scissors and the buttons and the thread and started sewing. And uh, when my mom and my Aunt Anna found me in the closet, my Aunt Anna was delighted. My mom was furious, but it <laughs> I didn't connect the art world to the sewing until I was 50. You know, after 36 years, the uh, newspaper had become my center of gravity. I had never anticipated retiring because I wasn't as old as I was. I mean, in my mind, I'm nowhere near my age. Uh, I might be 40, maybe, 39. I mean, that's about how I feel. Make uh, confetti-sized pieces. Sometimes I cut them into matchstick shapes, and you end up um, developing an entire palette, just like a painter. I studied this uh, technique with a Japanese artist. Her name is Nori Ko Endo. I'm 63. I'm going to be 64 any day now. No, time never stands still for me. I was born in the city, but I have a global viewpoint. I've done some international travel. I always planned to leave the city, but I was always so busy that I never got around to it. Um, I never had time to get old. I just didn't, and I don't feel old. And now I'm getting a few things, you know, um, health things that um, are things that are age-related, and it's really kind of disenchanting, you know, but it, my attitude is that I'm probably going to be able to figure out a way to beat it. Uh, my degree's in education, and then I went back and got it in art, but I really prefer to work for myself. <laughs> um, it's hard if you have a family and even if you're teaching to do any of, or much of your own work. It's really, you know, the time constraints. I painted for quite a while, but I've, I think it's the graphics influence. I always go back to the black and white. I just really like black and white and I like the, um, if even a tiny little print like any of these, or this is small, I mean this is small. It looks really simple, but the thought process that goes into it, I like that. I like that arranging items and getting the spacing to my satisfaction. Um, and that probably does, I've never really thought about it a lot, probably goes back to graphic work. I always do a lot of blackbirds. I started doing blackbirds with this series right here, and it's also in the hall. This one actually went with Mussorgsky's Pictures in an Exhibition. This, their eyes are the, the notes to the promenade music. They're, they're in the right spots. <laughs> I've always, um, at least the last 20 years, been involved with arts groups here both Artists of Rubber City. You may have seen their little gallery on the third floor of the box. I was very involved in that as it started. Um, this year I've had to step back from quite a few things. He died a few months ago. So, and he was, he got very ill New Year's Eve, totally unexpected, and uh, died June, like six months. He was hospitalized. He was home for a couple weeks from infections. infections. I mean, he was my best friend, you know, so I always think, oh, I need to tell Jean this, or I should ask Jean this. You still find yourself doing that, and it's, well, he may be listening, but he's not answering. <laughs> I have to be doing something creative. Now, it can't, doesn't have to be, you know, in the studio. It could be in the garden or redoing the home or anything. But if I'm not doing something creative, I get really depressed. So I think that's probably the biggest impetus is that I just feel I have to do it. I love using these.
series in my work. I have a series called the Age of Wonder series. Okay. Like this is an Age of Wonder series. I use found objects sometimes. And so I'll incorporate these into the canvas or the painting and things like that. And so I love collecting these. I was always drawing and painting as a child. And uh, I took my first art lesson when I was 14. And so I, I had a lot of encouragement from my father, my grandmother, people like that. And uh, I went to college and decided I wanted to be an artist and flunked out because I wasn't serious and uh, went and worked for several years, about 10 years, and came back and was very serious. And I was always painting along the way. And uh, so, you know, I, I, really, I really stuck with it and just let it flow. And one thing happened after another. I went into advertising years later. My paintings were still selling. <clears throat> I was able to finally quit my job and, and be a full-time painter in 1997. There were two women in my life that, were, that impressed me a great deal. Uh, they weren't in their 80s when I was a child child, but they were a great deal older. It was my grandmother and her best friend, uh, QB, her name was Queen Victoria. And she would help my grandmother out and think she was an African-American woman and my grandmother was a widowed woman at the time and they were very good friends. And they were just, my grandmother raised me. And so my grandmother's mother was an artist from old Washington, Arkansas. And so I was, they, they, they both encouraged me in the arts a great deal and basically taught me not to see color, not to judge people. You know, it was a little more difficult, especially back then for women in society. And they really taught me to do the right thing in life and try to be a good person and yet be proud to be a woman. And, and I really, I respect them for that. I really thank them for that. When I was in college, I was not doing very well in painting class at all. I just... I didn't go to class. <laughs> I got bored, didn't go. And uh, I just uh, gave her a ride home one day and her son had taken an old screen door off the front of her house that was blue and he set it to the side for the trash truck. And I had jury coming up, it was my senior year in college, and so I had this great idea to paint her, because she was so influential in my life, to paint her behind the door. And uh, I asked her if I could have the door and if I could take a photograph of her and she said yes. And so I painted, I skipped three more days of school and painted her behind the screen door and I got an A in painting class. I just did a mural down by the bicycle trail which was very, very large. It had a 11 foot uh, silhouettes of people uh, running and jogging and things like that. I helped, I helped do every figure and I was usually up on the ladder doing the top part and she did the bottom part. When I graduated college I thought I might try, I might try my hand at some cartooning. Um, didn't, didn't have anybody to learn from, just, just, you know, dove into it. So I took all the cartoons that I sold and came up with a central female character and two kids and called it Francie. And it was about a single mom and her two children. And it was syndicated and from 1986 to 1996, my mom raised uh, two teenage girls by herself. So, you know, you, you hear the old saying, write about what you know, and, you know, I had some little funny stories to, you know, convey, um, but it's really an occupation where you just have to jump in there and do it yourself without really any, um, I don't know, education. Uh, as far as having a teacher, you really can't go anywhere and have someone teach you how to do it. I hike a lot. Um, I try to eat healthy. I do artwork, I do cartooning, I try to get involved with my community, try to help out other people, try not to uh, think about your own problems so much. Um, I try to breathe, occasionally I'll go to the Buddhist center, you know, and um, try to live in the moment. Um, and that's really all you can do. Um, if you, I think if you just follow those, those basic rules, you'll be happy. You shouldn't put limitations on yourself. Just do what you want to do with the time you have. Because if you, if you, you know, kind of conform to society's rules, you're going to miss out on a lot. So that's my advice. For a long time, and I've been playing since I was, I've been playing in public since I was, I guess, 20. Um, I just turned 45. And for a long time it really bothered me because I thought, God, I'm getting older. You know, I shouldn't really pursue music. It's a young, young person's game. But the more I've been around, the more I really realize, especially in rhythm and blues, 
that the older you get, the really the better you are, the better you get. I think it was probably discovering Bonnie Raitt for me during college. Somebody turned me on uh, to some Bonnie Raitt. She came to Little Rock one time and played an acoustic show before she kind of hit it big back in the 80s. And she started playing this blues and I was electrified and I didn't sleep for like three days. <laughs> I had never seen anything like this. This woman was getting up there just kicking ass. It was probably because of her um, I related to who she was, a white woman interested in the blues, and um, because of her I was able to go back and discover all these other um, blues masters like Robert Johnson and Helen Wolf and Sun House. And so, you know, the longer I go on in life, I realize those are the things that, it, that it's about. When I was 23 years old, I, that wasn't what it was about to me. You know, it was about my ego and singing and rock and roll and, you know, being a, a local star of some sorts. To me, it's something that I'll always do. I think my writing has gotten better. My writing will get better um, as I can focus more on those um, things in life that, that really mean something. But I heard Paul McCartney say something a couple of months ago in an interview that blew my mind. He goes, you know, when I pick my cord up and I plug it into my amp and it, and it crackles and it does that noise, he goes, I still get such a thrill out of that. Just as much as I did when I was 16 years old plugging it in. And I was just like, yeah, I'm never going to lose that. I mean, that is flipping those switches and stopping on those guitar boxes and, you know... They just need to make the LED screens a little bit bigger for me now. <laughs> I, I realize, I like they need to blow that. They need bigger screens on stage.